Sampling is a very important production technique is actually what hip hop was founded on and you may be wondering how to do it. My name is El Marquis, musician, rapper, record producer, unashamed cross follower, and today I'm going to teach you how to sample in Logic Pro 10. El the cool thing about sampling in Logic Pro 10 is that there are multiple ways to do it. There's no right or wrong way as long as you get to the end goal that you want to achieve. And in Logic's 10.5 update, you have some more options to sample that actually make it a bit easier to do so. So now I'm going to show you my personal sampling techniques that I use when I'm making beats. But before we get into that, I need you to do me a really quick favor. If you like seeing videos where I break down how I write songs, how I make beats, production tips specifically for Logic Pro 10, and if you like amazing music, do me a quick favor, subscribe to this channel, and turn on notifications so you know whenever I upload new videos. And give this video a thumbs up, it will help people like you, who also enjoy this type of content, see more videos like this. So now I'm going to switch over to the computer and I'm going to show you how to sample in Logic Pro 10. First step to actually sampling in Logic is of course, finding a good sample to use. You can find loops or samples from tons of different places, such as YouTube, if you're looking to sample songs. You can use splice.com, which a lot of producers use. Most people actually use it. I think it's like $8 a month. You can get 100 credits, which can equal 100 different samples. You can purchase producers' sample packs off of their websites, such as cymatics.com or ADSR Sounds or Producer Grind. Different sound design companies and different producers can sell sample packs or even give them away for free. For the purpose of this video and also to promote some of my own products. I'm actually going to use a sample from one of my packs. It's actually a free sample kit that you can get off of my website, lmarkeyproductions.com. I'll also leave the free download link in the description below. And also, like I said, at the start of this video, there are multiple ways to sample. First, I'm going to show you the easy way to do, which is also the most common way to sample. It's as easy as dragging and dropping a sample and then manipulating it from there. And then I'll go on to show you another technique where you can actually chop up and rearrange your sample. So the first thing to do when you open up a new session file on Logic is go to audio and click create and you can pull up the sample that you either found on YouTube or that you found in a sample pack and drag it into logic like that so most of the time when you do use a sample or a loop that was in a pack it will give you the BPM information and the cool thing about logic is that it can actually import the tempo information so I'll click import right here and then it automatically matches the project's BPM to the sample if it didn't give you the option to import the tempo information hopefully it gives you the tempo right there so then you can just type it in right there and let's say you got a sample off of YouTube and you don't know the tempo, you can go down to audio effects, metering, BPM counter. And I found that the BPM counter works a lot easier when you're using a sample with drums in it. Let's see if it's gonna pick this up right here. Took a couple seconds, but it actually did 73.5 or you hit times two, 147. That's correct. So bam, so now we got the sample set up. And for some people that really could be it right there. And then you just go on to add drums. What I personally like to do is actually manipulating the sample to make it sound different because let's say this were a popular song that people oftentimes like the sample. It may sound really similar to someone else's beat or song. And then people are going to be mad at you because it sounds like you stole someone's idea. And the same can happen if let's say you use a loop from a very popular sample kit on Splice and a hundred other people have the exact same loop that you have and other people are saying your beat sounds like someone else's. Someone may be accusing you of stealing their idea even though you're using someone else's sample. So I'm now I'm gonna show you some ways that you can manipulate the loop and make it sound different. So the first thing that you should do is find whatever section of the sample or loop that you wanna use and either chop up what you don't want or just separate it into different sections for different sections of the beat like the A section, B section, verse, chorus, bridge. So let me play this part right here. So that could be like a verse. So I'm gonna grab my tools up here, my scissor tool, chop that part. So that whole part added in some other instruments. So that could be another section on its own. So then when you're arranging your beat, you could have it come in in different sections that way. You could even flip around. So let's say you can have that section start the beat. Just like that. transitions in that.
that's like a really basic way to do it another way would be to go in and just rearrange other parts of the sample let's say so i'm gonna swap out these two chords and the purpose of this isn't to make the craziest sample flip ever i'm just trying to show you some really basic things just so you can get an idea so let's hear what that sounds like So that sounds a little crazy, but if you spent more time into like really nitpicking which parts of the sample that you would like to rearrange like that, you can make something sound really cool. So let me put that back really quick. The next thing is changing the tempo and the key of the sample. So if you leave it at the same tempo and key that it already was at, someone else probably is going to have the exact same sample or loop, and you can really easily change the tempo and key signature of your sample. So the first thing you need to do is either hit Command F or hit this icon right here that opens up your flex modes click this button to enable flex and have it set to polyphonic so that way you can change the tempo and it's going to follow the tempo that you set so this sample is at 147 let's slow it down to 125. <laughs> perfectly in time let's speed it up just to prove that this works let's do 163. It already sounds a lot different. And in order to change the key, it's really easy. First of all, make sure that all the regions that you want to affect are highlighted. Go over here to transpose, and then you can drag it down or up. So let's see what it sounds like. Minus two semitones. That sounds cool. Let's hear what it sounds like when you take it up three semitones. sounding different that's good going in the right direction other things you can do is add different effects to the sample so a very common one that a lot of people use is rc20 i'll pull that up over here and this is a paid plugin i'm also going to show you what you can do with the stock plugins within logic so here's what it sounds like without rc20 and then here's just the default preset that you also can manipulate around with the knobs just to give you an idea of just some different ways to alter the sound and just transforms the loop into something different so once again here's what it sounds like without it and with it's different let me turn this off I'll show you something stock in Logic. Let's try using auto filter. So here's what the default preset for that sounds like. Now I'm just gonna go do like another preset just to show you what this thing can do. That was a little crazy started clipping a little bit hopefully that didn't blow up your ears but yeah the, the basic concept is just adding different effects to make it sound different there's not to be, be something even crazy like the auto filter let me show you something really simple like let's say let's put a chorus on it as like a cool wavy effect let's do i'll show you one more let's pull up uh delay let's hear what this sounds like and then you can also combine different effects like let's say i liked how the rc20 sounds and i like how that echo sounds So 
that sounds a little crazy, but you get the idea. If you combine altering the tempo, the key signature, and adding different effects, you can transform your sample into something completely different. So if you just left it by itself, someone else in the world probably has the exact same sample. They can make a beat around it, and yours and theirs may sound somewhat similar, but if you alter it, your sample can sound completely different. Your beat will sound completely different. It really depends on what you want. If you're happy with how it sounded when you got it, and then you just wanna add some drums over it, that's completely fine. If you wanna be a little bit more creative and put some more effort into your production, manipulating the sample in some way can help your beats sound more original. So whenever I'm sampling a loop, this is what I do the majority of the time. I just drag it in and then add different effects, change the tempo and key signature in some way. I can also rearrange some parts of the loop. So now I'm going to show you another way to sample in Logic by using the quick sampler plugin that came with Logic Pro 10.5. So now I'm going to pull up the sample, drag it over here and I'm going to put it on to quick sampler optimized and make sure that slice is selected. I'm also going to put the tempo back down to 147. So now what that did was it took that sample or that loop and it found different transients and it put them all on different keys so you can play them on your MIDI keyboard. So that's what it's going to sound like by default. What you may want to do is go down here to polyphony and change it to mono so that each time you play one of these chops they all cut each other off if you want to play chords or you want them to overlap each other in any way of course you can set the number higher if you want i'm just going to show you what it sounds like in mono for now so now whenever you play any of these keys sample plays. Awesome. What else can this thing do? Well, you're not stuck with your slices being the way they are. You can go into any of them and drag them out or shrink them, place them anywhere else you want like that. I'm also zooming in here with my mouse so you can really get a close look at what you're chopping up. So you can rearrange them however way you want. You also can make this follow the tempo of your song by clicking on this icon right here. That's the flex mode button. So now it will follow the tempo of your song or your beat. And you can still change the pitch of your sample by going down to pitch, chorus, let's say, actually I'll put it up, plus two. Put it even higher. Have your different chops just glide into each other. Let's see what this sounds like. Got a little carried away right there, but you see, that's awesome though. There's so much that you can do in this quick sampler plugin. I'm so glad that Logic put this out. My guy this is amazing so if you find a pattern or rhythm or chop that you like you know you can still record it into logic just hit record i'm going to play something random so you can get an idea of what you can do okay that was really messy but my bad you get the idea and look it popped up as midi data over here manipulate the MIDI data just like any other instrument. So if you really want to make a sample or a loop sound different, that's a really cool way to do it. That's a fun way to do it. Depending on the beat and what style I'm going for, that's something I like doing a lot. And then of course, from here, you can do the same thing as if you just dragged the sample in as an audio file and of course, add the different effects to it to further make it sound even more different. <laughs> Another really quick thing too is that you don't need to keep those effects on all the time if you choose to use them because you can always just automate them to change throughout the beat for different sections if you want to make things sound different. So let's say I want RC20 on the sample when it first comes in. All I have to do is just click that bypass button, then have a bypass right there. Then I can click on it, hit Command C, make sure it's on the location that I want it to be on, hit Command V. Oh, I did that backwards from how I said it, I think. Okay, I'll have it on right here and then I'll have it bypassed over here. So let me show you what that can sound like.
that's a really basic idea. It's on from one section, off the next. You can do that with whatever effect you want. So yeah, hopefully that was not super overwhelming, but there are so many different ways that you can manipulate samples in Logic. It's amazing, I love it. And there's more stuff that you can do that I haven't showed you in this video, but there's so much that you can do. It's amazing, it's so much fun. I highly suggest that you try this out. I used to be opposed to sampling and I would create everything 100% from scratch. And that's an important skill that you can have as well, but there's nothing wrong with sampling. Don't let people say that you're stealing someone else's ideas or songs by sampling or using loops. Don't let people say that you're unoriginal. If you're worried about not being original because you use someone else's creation, I just showed you a bunch of ways to manipulate a sample or a loop and then make it sound completely different. I highly suggest that you try this out. Use the techniques that I showed you in this video. I definitely recommend you get this free sample pack. Click the link in the description below. And if this video helped you out, feel free to connect with me on social media and show me some things that you come up with. So now you just learned how to sample in Logic Pro 10. Thank you for watching this video. If you like what you've seen today, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so you know whenever I upload new videos. Also, be sure to visit my website, lmarkyproductions.com, where you'll be able to check out my music, my beats, my sample kits, my merchandise, and my mixing, mastering, and consulting services. Now go down in the comment section below and let me know if you have any more questions about what we discussed in this video today. Are there any other Logic Pro 10 specific tutorials that you would like me to cover? Let me know in the comment section below. My name is Elmarkey, Elmarkey Productions. God bless.